ahead and create the addresses list okay but before that we do need to create our custom what do you call it uh, a custom hook to get the addresses data right so we need to come to our hooks and we need to create a new file and we need to call it fetch addresses okay and it has to be a DAF file let's create another one to fetch default address and it has to be a dot file as well so we're going to deal with our addresses first and then we can go ahead and do with our default address so let's go to postman we need to get default address but before that what we can do we can go to auth try to log in first here it's supposed to be in my email okay copy the token go to our environment and edit the current value and save okay after that we go to our all addresses Uh, okay all addresses this best URL okay the best URL has to change here to this best URL and let's go to our auth our auth we're going to use beer and for this one we're going to use user token okay so let's just go ahead and send the request so we do have an address here so we need to just go ahead copy this the response the response data after copying the response data then we can go ahead and visit quick type okay so here it's supposed to be let's just call it address response with the capital letter R over here okay and then copy the model after copying the model we go back to our application go to models create a new file addresses underscore response okay dart paste the code save close the file after closing the file what we can do we can go to our hooks okay hook model we need to create a new hook model and we're going to call it addresses And it has to be at the far over here. So let's just copy the data from one of the of these hooks and paste it in here. Here's supposed to be fetch address. So we need to change from fetch hook to fetch addresses. So this data it doesn't have to be dynamic, but it has to be a list supposed to be a list of address response let's make it nullable over here after that let's just go ahead to our hooks this is the hook that we want to deal with so we're going to copy one of the hooks so let's just go ahead and copy this hook that we have here for all categories paste the, paste the code in here so first we need to change the return value from fetch hook to fetch addresses 
okay like that so we should go ahead and import after importing we're going to have our error because here our data our return data is different so we need to change this list to address response okay everything else remains the same so we need to change the URL as well the service endpoint supposed to be addresses API slash API slash address slash all so let's go back to our application and we need to change this service endpoint let's add a slash over here and here is supposed to be address response from JSON let's get rid of the unwanted packages I guess that's all that we need to do for that particular for this particular hook okay so we have a hook now it's time to go ahead and hook it up to our page so what do we need to do we need to go to our profile widgets create a new file and we're going to call it address lists okay address underscore list over here and it has to be a dot file so this one is going to be a stateless widget address lists widget that's going to be the name let's import material after importing material uh, here we're going to have not a container per se but we're just going to have a list a list a list so let's go with list view dot builder okay so in here we're going to require item builder and we're also going to require item count so for item count we need to create a variable here final addresses supposed to be a list address response and we're going to give it a name addresses over here okay so we need to get it from wherever we are going to use this particular widget And our item count is going to be addresses dot length. So in here we need to go ahead and retain a container. We should have a return over here. Right? If you're returning a container, our container takes in a child. So a child, we need to have decoration. No, 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 no. Our child is going to be an address tile. Address tile. So we need to create this tile as well. And this tile is going to take address data, right? Like that. Okay, here it has to be semicolon. So this address tile needs to be created right on top. We need to have final address. So this is the address that we're passing. Here we have the error because we don't have the file. So that's something that we have to deal with in a little bit. First, let's go ahead and have decoration. Here, we're going to have box decoration. In our box decoration, we're going to have the color. So the color of our tile is going to be colors.white. Probably not, it shouldn't be, but let's go with that color for now. So we need to have a border. 
uh, it's supposed to be border. For border, we're going to have a border. And here we need the bottom. Okay. And we also need top. So it's going to be the same here. We just need to change this to 0 0.5, but that's something that we can do in a little bit. Top. We're going to have 0 0.5 over here. And let's change this color to K green. And this one to K gray as well. Let's add const over here. So here, what's left is to create this, this tile. We're going to create it in here as well. Address tile, underscore tile. Okay, the dart is supposed to be a stateless widget. So the name is supposed to be address tile. We need to import material. After importing material, then we're going to go ahead and deal with whatever we're going to put right underneath. Okay, so we're going to use a list tile, a list tile. But before we deal with our list tile, what we can do, we can have a final address. It's supposed to be address model address. So we need to import this model. And we need to edit to our formal parameters. Let's save the file. After saving the file, if we import here, then the arrow will be gone. Let's see the name address address response. Huh? Okay, not address model, but address response over here. Okay, so our error is gone. Let's get rid of the model that we imported. The model that we imported wrongly. Okay, so here our return is going to be a list tile. So our list tile is going to take on tap. On tap, we need to do something. And right underneath, we're going to have visual density. So for visual density, we're going to go with compact as well. Just the same as what we're doing before and we need leading. So for leading, we're going to have an icon, not icon button, but an icon. And for icon, we're going to go with simple line icons. And our icon is supposed to be a location pin here. And let's give it a color. So for the color, we're going to make it K primary. The size, we have to make it a little bit bigger. So for the size, we're going to give it a 28. Okay, let's add dot edge so that we won't have complaining lint. So that's it for the leading. Now for the shape, we're going to have a, a rounded rectangle with a border radius of border radius of border radius dot circular and a value of 10 inside. Okay. That's it for the shape. And right underneath, we're going to have a title. So for a title, we have to use our reusable text widget over here. First, we need the text. So our text is supposed to be coming from address dot address line one. 
and let's go ahead and give it an app style. Let's give it a size of 11 and for the color, we're going to give it a K gray color like that. And as for the font weight, we're going to have font weight dot W500 like that. Okay. We're going to have a, a subtitle. So for subtitle, we need to just display the postal code. Let's bring our style down. Okay. And let's bring this down as well. We can copy this and we can paste this here. Okay. So this one is supposed to be postal code. Let's put it in a column. And our column, we have to give it a cross X alignment. It has to be the start over here. So let's try to hook it up and then we can just deal with our changes while we are seeing whatever we're working on. So we need to go to addresses page in addresses page. We need to go ahead and hook it up, right? But the first thing that we need to do, we need to consume our, but we need to consume our, our hook. So here's supposed to be final. Let's just call it data is equals to, okay. We need to change the name of the hook. Damn. I forgot. We need to change the name, mm, the name of our hook from fetch all categories to fetch addresses. Okay. Like that is equals to fetch addresses. Let's go ahead and close it. So this is supposed to be hook results. So let's just use the, the same syntax, the same names so that we won't confuse each other. Okay. Right at the bottom, we're going to have a final list. So our list is supposed to be address response. And initially, uh, we're going to give it a name address addresses is equals to hook results dot data or we're going to okay uh, let's see let's see what's the cause of the error over here Just change this to use. Use fetch. You don't data. We still have the same error. And the other thing, let's convert this to a stateless widget and convert it to a, a hook widget. Okay. Get rid of the consts, but we still have the, the error over here. So let's go ahead and revisit hook response. Data. Okay. Let's visit our hook.
change this name but it doesn't have any impact on how our our data is going to look so addresses Okay. Let's see. Okay. So my error is here. Okay. And it took me a while to to figure it out. So the hook was not in the in the correct position. So what we can do here, we can just leave it as it is, and we can initialize it as an empty empty array over here. We don't want to have any any errors related to related to 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 our widget. So here we're going to have address lists address list widget okay so let's just go ahead add a comma uh, we have to close it first and add a comma but before that we need to have is loading okay so we're going to have final is loading is equals to okay we do have an error somewhere Okay, we might need to restart our application in a little bit, but here we need to go ahead and check if is loading. Then we're going to display footless shimmer. Else we're going to display our our widget. Okay. So let's add const over here and let's restart our application. So probably with this, we're going to, to have our, our address without any problem. It's still nothing. Okay. We didn't get anything. Get request two hundred. Okay. We're going to print response dot status dot status code. Let's go back and four four zero one. Okay, we are receiving a 401. So that means if we send this request, we're getting the data here. So what could have been the error though? What okay, let's check. Okay, we're using the same backend, so probably we should have the data. Let's just check our check our backend, but our backend doesn't have no problem because we're getting the data in Postman. If we weren't getting the data in Postman, 
then we should be worried but we do have the data so routes is supposed to be all so it's supposed to be address or addresses address address okay so let's just go ahead and print and we can print the URL as well so that we can check where our error is coming from back and we visit the page you're not authenticated okay so it's a token issue it's a token error okay so let's get rid of this so right in here we need a token whenever we are sending this request we need to send headers alongside with it so what we can do we can have our box right on top box is equals to get storage like that so let's just go ahead and close and we need to access our box here so the pattern is the same as what we were doing with our addresses so we can go to this particular controller and we can copy this these lines okay in add address they're going to be the same so we need to paste them over here and we need to get rid of this URL so whenever we are sending this we are going to require headers and our headers are going to be equal to to headers like that so let's just format the code back and then okay we do have our address so that's good we need to push it a little bit down okay we need to push it a little bit down so what we're going to do we're going to add padding a padding is it padding mm, it should be should be padding let's go ahead and have a padding so for padding we're going to have symmetric then here is supposed to be horizontal so we're going to give it a padding of let's give it a padding of 30 wow that's supposed to be vertical not horizontal like that that will do okay so we are done with this with this page this page we are done with it so we can go ahead and close it this one we might leave it open we can close this as well default address for the default address we can copy whatever we everything that we have in this hook and paste it in here so we're going to revisit this and make some changes to it okay but let's just save for now close our focus should be the the tile we need to finish the tile because we didn't finish the address tile okay so on tap okay we can leave it like that here we do have a column so we need to have another text right underneath the this text so here we can display uh, like a message let's see it's supposed to be a string over here 
step two set address as default and here I'm going to reduce the size to smallest size as possible in eight okay so for address we can make it k dark something like that so that's how it's going to be how it's going to look like okay so we are done with that part we're done with the address part next let's focus on getting the default address okay go ahead and get the default address so to get the default address we created the hook of writing but we need to make some changes to it okay so here let's see what we have fetch fetch default now okay so we need to change this to it's supposed to be address address response okay and it can be it can be now so now we need to change this to address response from but we need to decode the data first so here it's supposed to be var data is equals to we need to store the data that we're getting first and then we go ahead and to and have another one we're going to have uh, decoded let's just call it decoded is equals to mm, this might be a little bit longer let's see No. no response body here we need to use J json decode and we are putting the data and in here we need to access the data okay let's see Oh, my bad. It's supposed to be decoded over here. Okay. Address can be assigned to list list response. So it's supposed to be response. response response okay so let's change this to to fetch hook so that we can pass dynamic data let's get rid of that so I guess that's pretty much everything that we need to do but we do need a uh, service endpoint over there so our service endpoint we're going to go to default address default okay go back to this particular endpoint okay so that's all we need to find some way to hook it so we're going to hook it inside of our customer bar it's a stateful widget so we need to change it to a hook. It's supposed to be a hook state for widget. Okay, probably. 
I did something wrong. State for hook consumer widget. Okay, I forgot how to create that. Let me just create a new one here. So here it's supposed to be it's supposed to take the same name. Custom air bar. It's supposed to be this one. State for hook widget. So we don't need to even do everything that we did trying to restructure so it's supposed to be okay like that and then we just import our hook over here final hook results is it goes to now we need to change the name of the hook to use fetch default like that okay so that's the same name that we are going to use here use fetch default and here we're going to have final address is equals to hook results dot data and let's just go ahead and print the data print address let's go ahead and work on our cut controller we want to add items to the cart and display them so first we need to go ahead and create a new file and we we're going to name it cut controller over here and it has to be a dot file okay so we need to create a class and our class is going to be cut controller and is going to extend get x controller okay after that what we need in here we need to have a function and we, we need to have beside before the, before the function we need to have an rx rx bool for for loading the cart okay so is loading it's, it has to be a private variable over here is loading is equals to false dot obs after that we need to create a getter and we need to create a setter okay so we need to change the name to set loading and in instead of avoid here we're going to use set okay so that's our first function our first variable right underneath we need to create a function to add to cart okay so it's supposed to be void add to cart okay so everything will come in here but here we're going to require a string and this is the cart data a string uh, let's just call it cart over here and our function has to be asynchronous so the first thing that we need in our function we need to have a, a, a token a token okay so first let's set loader to to true after setting loader to true then we're just going to go ahead and get our token so we're going to have string a string with the name token over here is equals to box dot read and we're reading the the token let's go ahead and close that right on top we need to instantiate our our box so final box is equals to get storage it's supposed to be get storage over here yeah okay 
so let's go ahead and close that so now that we do have our token over here we need to just go ahead and have our our url so we need to create a variable if our url is equals to uri uri dot pass so in here we need to include our our base url so first thing that we need is our base url it's supposed to be app base url slash api slash not app but slash api slash cart okay i like that so let's close that right at the bottom we're going to have a try catch block so in our try we're going to create a variable so for our response is equals to await we need to await for our response from the rest api so we need http in here so we need to import we need to import the we need to import http package okay so in here we're going to require the url and we're going to require headers it's supposed to be headers over here and we're going to require a body and our body is going to be cart okay so let's just go ahead and close it so we need our http package first so on top http import http is http okay so now we need to have our headers so for our headers we're going to use let's go to font verification in for verif in font verification we do have our headers so we're just going to copy our headers from here and we're going to paste them right on top okay so let's change this name from token to access token so we don't have an error anymore now we need to process our response okay so after we send the request we're going to get a response so if our response dot status code is equals to 201 then we're going to go ahead and set this loading to false at the same time we want to display a a snack bar okay so our color here is going to be k primary and let's import these icons okay uh, the position it has to be on top not at the bottom so let's get rid of that edit to cart enjoy awesome okay so that's good else if we do have an error we're going to have our error is equals to api error from from json okay and we need to go ahead and have a snack bar okay text color text okay this would do but if it's for an error the background color let's go with k red okay for this one we're just going to go ahead and debug print a to string like that okay so that's all that we need to do after we debug print let's say we do have an error we need to have finally after finally we just need to set loader to to false okay so we're done with that part like down at the bottom we're going to create a function to just remove an item from from the cart is it necessary add to cart let's let's copy this function and let's paste it here after we paste we need to change the cart the the name to remove from cart so to remove from cart we're going to require a cut not cut id but product id product id like that and we need to get rid of the body but we're still going to require our headers our url has to change so here our service endpoint is going to be cart delete slash and then we need to push our product id as a param over here and let's change this to to delete our status code has to be 200 if it is 200 then we're going to just set set this to false and our cart will retain data right we'll retain a set of data that we're going to to use mm, let's see no we cannot do it that way okay so we need to refresh the data after deleting so that's something that we'll take care of whenever we are going to test the the function so let's change the message here so we can say product removed successfully so i guess that's all that we need to do even if we're, we're deleting probably we don't need to 
get the data back so that's something that we might need to change in our backend sooner or later okay so this is our function to to get the cart okay so we're done with it we're not going to run a test now but later next we're going to create the the controller not the controller but the hook to get the cut data and some the models which are related to the cart so we can go ahead open postman after opening postman we need to copy the body and go back to go to our quick type in our quick type we need to paste the body over here after pasting the body then we need to go ahead and change the name okay so this one we're going to call it uh, cut cut requests okay we don't need an underscore over here that's going to be our cart request so we go back to our project go back to models in models we need to create a new file and we're going to call it cut request and it has to be a dot file over here so let's paste the code save and let's close the file okay we're done with that part next we go back to our postman and in, in our postman we need to go to fetch cart okay we just need to send a request so i have one item in my cart i have an item in my cart so what we need to do over here we just need to go ahead and copy our our cart okay we need to copy the list okay we need to copy the list after copying the list go back to quick type paste and this one it has to be a cut response so we're going to get rid of the created date and the date so we need a total quantity uh, user ID I doubt let's get rid of the user ID we don't need it but the product most probably most definitely we need it so let's copy this go back to our project in our project in models again we need to create a new file and we're going to call it cut response is it response yes it's supposed to be response over here or we can call it a cut model either way and let's paste the code after pasting we save okay so we are done with our models the next thing that we need to do is to go ahead and create the hook so coming back to our hook folder we need to create a new file and we're going to call it fetch cart and it has to be a dot file over here okay so for this one we can just copy any any hook that we do have for instance let's go with the one that got hooks okay so not hooks but headers fetch address that's the one that we're going to use we're going to copy that and we're going to paste the code in here first let's change the name from use fetch address to use fetch cart and we need our box so here fetch addresses it has to change we're going to use fetch hook like that so we need to import fetch hook and down at the bottom we need to change fetch addresses to fetch hook so we don't have an error our response here it's supposed to be lists cart response okay cut response from from json everything else remains the same over here so we need the endpoint so our endpoint is going to be different for for getting the cart. So that's one thing that we do need to take care of. 
So here it's supposed to be API cart. Okay. Like that. Let's just save. So here everything is will remain constant, will remain the same. So we need to go to our cart page. In our cart page, we already have the redirect the verification page. And we need to change this to a hook widget. So we need to have final. Or let's bring it down. Final hook result is equals to use fetch cart. Okay. Let's import it. After importing, we're going to have final is equals to hook dot data. Final is loading is equals to hook dot is loading then error is equals to hook dot error now we can go with api error okay it's supposed to be error over here uh, it's it's an exception let's get rid of that so here we're going to have a condition if uh, okay, this one we can have it inside. If it is loading, then we can load our data from 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 the inside, inside the the body, rather than to to load it from the top. So here we do have a container. This container we need to change it to something else. Let's just have an air bar here with an elevation of zero background color of let's visit our cart not k primary but k off white yes that will do and we can have a title for title we're going to use reusable text widget Add a text cart and we add a style. So here we're going to use F style 12, not 12, 12 is too small. Let's go with 14. Okay, great. And for our font weight, we're going to go with W600, just like all other titles. Okay, so that's going to be our title. Let's format our code. Let's, let's make it visible. Okay. So in here, instead of retaining the this container, we want to have a condition. If it's loading, then we're going to go ahead and display foods list shimmer. Else, we're going to have a container. Let's just put a container here but we're not going to be displaying a container. That's something that we are just doing for now to get the application running. Okay, so over here, we're going to have const. Here, we need refetch, okay? Final refetch is equals to data.refetch. So this container, let's give it a width. And we're going to give it a width of width and let's give it a height. And our height is going to be to be height over here. We're going to give it a color, not a color because we already have a color. So what we can do, we can just go ahead, give it a child. So our child is going to be a list view builder. So our list view builder takes item count and item count and in the builder. Okay. So here uh, it's going to be dynamic. No, we don't want it to be dynamic. So we need to specify the data over here. So it's supposed to be final cut response data or 
we're going to have an empty array. We did make an error. Okay, let's visit our models and see cart requests response. It's supposed to be a list. Cut response from. Okay. Okay. So it's supposed to be a list. My bad. I forgot. List cut response. Okay. Let's see. So here we have to change to cart as well. So we don't have the error in the fetch cart, but we do have some errors over here. So here's supposed to be dot length. So that's pan that pans out okay. So in here we need uh, context, and we also need the the index, okay. And we're going to return something. So I'm going to just return a container over here. Our width is going to be width. Let's give it a height of 100. And let's give it a color over here. Okay, primary. So we have one item in the cart. So that's why we do have this one, one container showing up. Okay, so so far so good. We're getting our cart. So we need to design the cart tile. So uh, let's just go ahead and replace this with a size box. We're getting the cart tile. So we need to design the we need to design the cart tile and display the tile over here. Okay, let's go ahead and and work on our cut tile. So we need to create a new folder in here and we need to call it cut tile, okay? And it has to be not a new folder. We need to create a folder, but it's going to be a widget folder over here. Instead of that widget folder, we need to create a new file and we're going to call it cut tile. And it has to be a dot file, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and look for a full tile. And then we're just going to copy the contents of the contents of the food tile those are the contents that we're going to play around with so we have to go ahead and look for the food tile uh, probably in the restaurant nope okay wow where could it be in the home page home 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 okay so we do have a food tile over here right so that's the same one that we want to copy and we need to paste the code in here. So after pasting the code, what we can do, we can start by changing the name to, to cart tile. So that's the first. Next, we need to change this model, right? But the color, we can leave it like that. We can leave it like that. And let's just go ahead and get rid of that. So we need to specify the model that we're consuming in here. So if you come to the car page, we're going to be consuming cut response. Okay. And we're going to call it cut here. So we need to import the model. Okay. So we need to change this name as well. So like that, we don't have a, we don't have an error anymore. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to go ahead and change the names, like where we're getting the image and stuff. So here we have to replace all the the foods that we've used with oh not not that one <laughs> starting from this one let's see do we have another one down here no so we can change this to cart yes okay so now first we need to look for for the title so it's supposed to be cart dot product dot title okay as for the image is coming from product dot image okay this is an uh, a list string so we need to access the index so we're going to pick the first image let's check whatever what's what's next we do have additives so these additives are coming from product id dot do we have additives okay this might be a little bit cut response okay so additives are outside not inside so we need to revisit this one instead of 
getting into products into the product we just go ahead and access our additives so our additives here they are going to be a list let's see that's a list string so here we can just make it a variable so this var value is going to be a string yeah okay so if it is a string then here we just need to remove the title okay so that's all that we need to do over there let's see we do have the price here so our price is going to come from product id dot supposed to be price here if we do have it no the price is probably outside dot quantity total price dot two which is string is fixed okay so we need two decimal places so now we do have four errors we do have the time uh, let's check whether we do have time nope we don't have time over here so the delivery time we're going to get rid of that so let's see whether we can we can reload our page uh we can reload but we didn't hook it up so cut page and we need to go ahead and hook our our cut tile over here cart we need to access the cart so here we need to go ahead and create the final for final instance of the of the data that we're getting so cart is equals to it's supposed to be um, this name we have to change it from cart let's just add s over here and we add another s over here so that we won't have a conflict okay so that's going to be our that's going to be our tile so we need to work on it a little bit so here we do have a size box but what we can do instead of reducing the size of the of the instead of reducing this size we can just add a padding over here we can wrap this size box in a padding and we're going to give it an agencies dot only so here it's supposed to be symmetric not not only <laughs> supposed to be symmetric over here and we need to manipulate horizontal side since we do have screen utils now we need to get rid of the const okay okay like that but here we need to make it to 12 12 will do but we do need to change the color so here we have a color prop let's go with k off white off white is not even showing up so let's go with light white okay light white will do so we do have our price over here right uh let's see other the props that we have in our cut response quantity product one two three four so we are going to leave it like that but we need to add a delete button instead of a cut button okay so back to our tile so this is our our cut place we're going to have trash can over here and let's change the color the background color of the it should be which part if this is trash can light white that's the color so that's the color of the container let's just make it k red so here we also we're also going to to require a, a final function it's supposed to be function over here and we need to call it a refetch now let's get rid of the unused unused dependencies so that's it that's our cart so our main focus is going to be adding the cart we already have the function so what we can do we can just go to not to our list per se but to our not our food widget it should be food tile yes food tile we need to go ahead and add to cart okay cart controller dot add to cart so we need to have a final instance of our controller here so let's just call it controller is equals to get dot put it's supposed to be 
cart controller okay so let's just go ahead and close it right there so we need to access this controller and that's the same controller that we're going to use over here so add to carts when adding to cart we need the data okay so we're going to have var variable cart is equals to not cut response but it's supposed to be a requests cut requests okay that's the name cart requests so we need the product id we need the product id we need additives we need quantity and we need total price okay so here is supposed to be not cart but it's supposed to be food dot price quantity is going to be one over here uh, additives we're going to initialize them as in empty array and for the id is supposed to be food dot id mm, let's call this data we need to convert this data to string so right underneath we're going to have string cart is equals to cut request uh, cut request to, to json okay and then we're going to push this okay it's going to be a little bit empty if you don't have additives okay so that's going to be the way that we're going to add stuff to to our to our cart that's if we are f adding from something like this point right if we're adding from some somewhere like this let's see okay add it to cart okay and so if we go to our cart we have two items we don't have additives here okay so in our cart button cart tile we're going to delete a product so we need to access the same the same controller okay so final controller get dot puts and then here we do have our our controller so going back to this position widget we need to access our controller and then remove an item from from the cart okay so it shouldn't be this product id but it should be id if you're removing at the same time we need to make some modifications over here okay so here we're going to require a function a refetch so whenever we remove something from the cart we're going to refetch the data okay what's going on okay because we don't have the refetch so we don't have refetch over here we have to pass refetch from somewhere is it this refetch so in our cart page we have to pass this ref refetch function from here to to the tile okay refetch refetch coming back to this page we do have an error okay it has to be a nullable nullable function okay we do have an error here so this error in most cases is related to our so our endpoint so let's visit our function not our function <laughs> let's go ahead and visit our backend it's supposed to be backend over here so we need cart from the cart we need to go ahead and remove cart item okay by id params user id let's go to our route where's our route 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 cart okay remove cut item so it's going to be just delete over here and then we provide the id so we don't have the delete we just have the id so this is wrong so let's try okay so we've successfully deleted and successfully refreshed our cart without any problem so we are done with this part the next part that we might focus on is to just add products from here now add products from from this particular particular page move from this controller a while back i created the list and i deleted it with the name get list that list was supposed to be for our for our additives that we want to add 
that we want to add along alongside our our product so we need to recreate the list again the function that's going to get all the data inside of our additives and then push that list to to our cut product okay so we just need to work on that list and then we can go ahead and finish up with our with our cut function add to cut from the cut from the food page okay so over here we're going to have a list string and our list string is going to be get additives let's call it get edit additives so that not just additives let's just specify cut additives okay so to get cut additives here what we're going to do we're going to create a local list okay and we're going to call it additives okay so first this list is going to be to be null okay so we're going to have a let's remove this we don't want to add confusion let's just write it let's just write everything from from the start oh man i'm trying to press tab and this code is coming okay so we're going to have a for loop so we're going to go through through our list okay with a, a for loop so we're going to just go through let's say var additive in additives list okay so if is checked is value is equals to true then we're going to add the title to to this list okay the title of the additive to this list okay like so okay so our condition over here we have to check if the value is true and the list doesn't contain that value that's only where we are going to add if it contains that value then we're not going to do anything okay so and that's going to be our function and else we need to remove right if it exists then we need to go ahead and remove here we have to set it as else if and our condition is is not additive so if it is false and it if it is contained in this list in this additive right then we're going to go ahead and remove it over here and we're going to return this list that we have okay so our return value is going to come over here return return additives so we have to go ahead each and every time that we click on this check we have to go ahead and get this get this list as well okay so we go back to our food page not that not the car controller we need to go to our food page in our food page we are going to go to to this list it's going to be some else because i don't even know where it is tags these are tags so that's right on top it achieves this one so when we click let's see okay here we're supposed to access the controller and we're going to get cart additives list okay so what we can do here we can just print print the the list controller uh we can print let's see okay is that possible yes it is possible so if we add something we're going to get the list so this is the list that we want to push 
with our cut items okay it's all backhand uh, before that let's just go ahead and remove this product then our list is going to be empty okay so everything is working fine so what we can do we can go to this cut button that we have right at the bottom let's see let's try to find where it is, where it is. it's here so we have a controller right but we need a cut controller a cut controller so we need to instantiate our cut controller right here on top no uh, we're going to have final cut controller is equals to get that put cut controller so that's going to be the the controller where we are getting our where we're getting our functions so our cut function okay so we need to go down again to to the cut button our cut button is here okay so no this is wrong we need cut controller dot add to cart so we need the string that we're going to push so here we need to create an instance so var cart is equals to it's supposed to be cut requests so we need the id additives quantity as well as the total price mm, our total price that's going to be a double so for our price we can just copy our price from here uh, we have to find a way to have this price as a double if we can remove those it doesn't work probably this will work but this gesture detector we have to close it somehow so we're closing that over there this is the child so we're still inside okay so we have to remove this one and we're going to add one over here a little bit tricky okay let's go back let's close this first and let's just do with our quantity our quantity is going to be coming from controller count dot volume our additives is supposed to be controller dot get additives list our id is supposed to be not foods but is it foods it should be food additive controller noob widget widget food widget dot food dot id okay so for total price uh, let's just go ahead and have a double here price is equals to let's see widget food plus additives times okay so this might be okay but where, where it is now that's going to be inside okay so we can just put it as a double here so our price is going to be a double so we're going to put a double here like that so we have this cart and we need to convert the data to to a string okay so let's call this data and down here we're going to to just have our string okay string cart is equals to cart request to to json and then we pass the data and this is the same string that we're passing here okay so let's add some some additives okay count 
and if you press okay the item has been added to cart so if we go to our cart then we have two items this is the item that we just added now so if you delete the first item it's going to be gone now we have one item left in our cart so so far so good we're done with this part a uh, tech note when it comes to the price it's a little bit tricky even for me so you need to take note so widget food dot price plus controller dot additive price so this is the total of the additives then we multiply that by the count okay that's how we are getting our our total price food page we want to go ahead and work on our order order page so the first thing that we need to do we need to come back into our food page so when we come to line 303 okay so here we should create a food item that we're going to send to the to the order page so before we do that we need to go ahead and go and create the the page itself because we don't have it as yet so we are going to create a new folder and we're going to call it order okay so in views create a new folder and we're going to call it orders right so the first file that we're going to create is for for our order order page right so here it's supposed to be a lowercase order page and it's supposed to be a dot file over here so let's go ahead and create our file, create our widget, not our file. So it's supposed to be a stateful widget. And let's give it a name. So we're going to call it order page, right? Like that. So let's go ahead, import material over here. After importing material, we want to turn this to a scaffold. And our scaffold takes in an air bar in the body. So we're just going to take these as they are. We're not going to do anything out of the ordinary as yet. So when we come back, that's when we're going to, to do more, okay? But what we can do here is for our body, we can remove this and we can go with our, our background container, right? So our background container takes in a child and in the color, okay? So for color, let's go with colors.white for restart. So our child is supposed to come right after our color. So let's add a comma, put our child over here. And we're just going to pass an empty container like that. Okay. So let's save. Going back to our food page, we want to just set up navigation to the page. Okay. So here is supposed to be get to, since we're using get x to to navigate okay it's supposed to be order page like that let's close it and let's give it transition so for our transition we're going to go ahead with cupertino and let's go with cupertino over here and for the duration 500 700 900 that would be okay but i'm going to go with 900 over here so in our order page, we're going to require the data related to, to the restaurant. So if we go back to the top, let's see. So here we're getting the, the restaurant data. Okay. Here, use fetch food dot restaurant. That's the data related to, to the restaurant. So what we need to do, we need to create a final instance for restaurant data okay let's just call it restaurant over here this equals to hook results dot dot data so this one should be a restaurant model so we can change this one over here and we can just go ahead and import so here it has to be nullable okay so this value is not used so we're supposed to pass it to the order page right so in our order page, we're going to create a final variable. So it's supposed to be final restaurant model. 
and it can be now then we are going to give it a name restaurant okay okay so here when we are navigating we said line 303 okay so i'm just going to do it quick i'm just going to be now it's line 306 so here we're supposed to pass restaurant and the data that we are passing is this restaurant that we we have on top right so that's the the first thing that we need to do so we can go ahead and try this then right on top we need to create in a food not a food item but we need to create an order item okay we need to create an order item over here before we create our final order okay so when we are ordering this item is the one that we're going to put inside of our inside of our uh, that's supposed supposed to be ordered order data so if you visit postman over here order items right so we have an array this array so we need to create this particular item that's going to be inside okay so probably everyone has this collection so what you can do you can just copy one food item one order order item from the lists like that okay and we need to go ahead and visit quick type it's supposed to be quick type over here in quick type we're going to paste this and we're going to call it order order model like that so that's going to be our model we have our model and our model data instead of our model data we do have this order item that's the one that we want to focus on but we need everything here to be able to to create this item okay so we are just going to to copy the the order go back to our vs code here let's bring back our application as well and let's put them side by side okay so in models folder we need to create we need to create an order model that's supposed to be order model so these ones are going to be different a little bit different a little bit different it's going to be a little bit different in a sense that the one that we copy is just it's a response but we need to go ahead and create the other one to send the request so we'll take a look at, at that in a little bit when we go to the next page so here we have our order model so we need to paste the code that we just copy from from quick type and then let's just clear this the unused code from from above okay so now that we have the model here we can just go ahead and have our order item and we're going to call it item is equals to order item okay so we need to fill this data the food id the quantity the price the additives and the instruction we do have this id okay that's why i'm saying this is a little bit different because this id is not required here so we need to create a a separate order item or a separate model that's responsible for creating the the items rather than using the one that we used okay because this id only comes from from mongo uh, we don't have this id okay so let's just go ahead get rid of that we will take care of our our model first and then we can go ahead and do whatever we please so here the goal is to see what we have in the next page right so whenever we are going to the next page we said we require restaurant data and we require the data related to the food as well the food item that we do have over here so we need to pass the the data as well so if we go back to the top we have this food we want to pass it to to our order page okay so 
here we're going to have a final it's supposed to be a foods model and we're going to call it food over here so we need to edit to our formal parameters after adding to our formal parameters since it's required we need to pass it from from our line 306 now it's 317 okay so here we need to pass food and we are passing the food that we have right on top so to access it we're going to use widget dot food okay like that so if you press here now we're directed to this page and this page has all our data so here let's rectify this in our order page all right so we do have this container so we need to give this a bar a background color okay so for the background color we're going to go with let's go with k secondary for starters and see how it looks okay so it's going to look like that if it's looking like that uh, it won't be okay so let's go with primary if we go with primary then that's okay that means this color has to change to primary as well so that we can maintain the same the same color for for these edges that we do have because we want to maintain the the design okay okay primary Ooh, nope okay so this one has to be white but the scaffold background color supposed to be background color over here it has to be k primary like that okay so here and we can use our reusable text widget in our text is supposed to be let's just say complete ordering like that and we need to give it a style so for style we're going to go with f style like that so let's give it a size of 18 and the color let's go with k gray and for the font weight we're going to go with not normal but we can go with 600 for starters so that's how it's going to look okay so let's go back okay we still need to open the page anyway so here we we did we checked whether we do have a phone number whether this user has data or not if it is if it if it doesn't have data then we are redirecting a user to this particular particular page right so what's left is to just order the food yeah, okay so let's see how we can create our our model and then we can come back create our order item and then we can design how it's going to look and how we are going to process payments after that so let's go ahead and create our our order model so it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult to to do it but the best way that we can do it let's see we do have our backend running over here right this is our backend we just go to to our order okay so this is our, our order so what I'm going to do I'm going to just copy everything from here uh, and go to the browser open chat gpt i need to just go around it a little bit because if i try to do it from from scratch it's going to take a little bit so i paste the the model that we just copied from from our project and i'm just going to prompt chat gpt to do something okay i'm going to just say create postman a payload from the model okay like that so i want postman payload we can use that payload to create a model okay so this is what we want once we have this then we can just go ahead to quick type and create a model without having any problems with trying to get the data first or create the the order first because this is a lot of data that we need to to provide beforehand so let's just go ahead wait for it to finish and then we can just go ahead copy copy the model right now we do have the payload 
we go to quick type and then here we're going to to create a new one okay so that's what is what it is going to look like so here we're going to call it order request it's supposed to be a request over here okay so if you are able to write prompt sometimes it becomes a little bit easy rather than to just go ahead and do everything manually so this is our request model we do have our food item over here without the id so that's exactly what we need let's copy our code go back to to our project inside of our project we need to go to models in models we're going to create a new file in this file we're going to call it let's call it order request so that we can avoid confusion in the near future okay since we have two files that are related okay so here this is what we got so this this is the data that we require to to create to create an order some of the stuff we're going to overlook it or remove it but for now this is what we are dealing with okay unlike rating we are going to just overlook it since we're not going to to use it so let's just save after saving we are going to go back to the top we need to get rid of this model that we have over here because we don't want our our data to to conflict we don't want to face the wrong model okay let's just get rid of this after getting rid we're going to create an order item so our order item is going to come from order requests and we're going to call it item over here after giving it a name then we need to create a new order item it's supposed to be order item over here let's go with this one yeah probably this is the one that we are looking for exactly so we want to fill this data so first is going to be the the food id so our food id is going to come from widget dot foods food dot id okay dot id that's going to be our first our quantity is going to come from from our counter okay increment decrement so we do have the controller over here so that's the controller that we're going to use okay so here is supposed to be controller dot count dot value okay and as for the price the price is going to be the same as the one that we calculated before so we are going to we do have a total price over here okay we can do the same just copy this line that we had we created when we were setting the price for the cart right and we put the same number the same variable over here so we need to get this price that's going to be our price over here and our additive list is going to be the list that we're going to get from from our from our additive okay so we need to go ahead and find out this is additive's price so it's supposed to be controller dots additives list no this is wrong we can just say get cut additives now for here and for instructions we do have a text field a text editing controller right on top with our preference so that's the one that we're going to use we just copy the title come back and we are going to extract the text okay so that's it that's our item now that we have this item the next thing that we need to do we need to pass it to our to our page so we're going to copy this the model the model name the class name right go back to our order page and we're going to create a final instance of that model over here and we're going to call it let's just call it item let's just keep the same name okay we need to import now we're importing from order request not order model so take note 
and we need to edit to our formal parameters. After adding to our formal parameters, we need to go back to our the food page. So in our food page, now we are required to have our an item. In, and our item is supposed to be this item that we just we just created right here on top. Okay. So we are done with everything that we need to do in this page. So what we're going to do just to run a test, so we're going to come to our to this page, okay, or order page. So down here, we're going to go ahead and print. We need to print, okay, that print is in caps, because it's, I wrote it before our, our build context. So here, we need to go ahead and print. Okay, so we need to access widget dot item dot additive so let's just go with additive okay so it's supposed to be a list string so what we can do over here we can we can add a few items okay increase the count and then place an order so this is the list so that means we are getting our data over here so that's okay and now we need to go ahead and design this page design what it is going to look like and then we can have our button right here at the bottom to go ahead and process the order but we're going to take a, a different approach because what we want to do we want to create the order first right before we make the payment so if we create the order then our payment status is going to be um, pending whenever the payment is completed then the payment status is going to be updated but that work is going to be done inside of our our payment server so the payment server is going to be provided for you but we're going to go through how to to run it and how to set it up starting with uh, stripe to change URLs so that you can get like uh, hook results okay so for food page I think that's all that we need to do but for order page we still have like a couple of things that we need to take care of before we we continue to our payments what we need to do here instead of returning a column what we're going to return we're going to Instead of returning a container, we're going to return a column, okay? So first, we're going to have a column, and our column takes in children. So our first child is going to be a size box. We need to create a little bit of space right on top, right? So we're going to have a size box, and we're going to give it a height over here. And the height that we're going to give it is not 20, but we're going to give it a height of 10. So here, it's supposed to be 10.h, okay? So that's our container. That's our space, not our container. Right after that, we're going to have an an order item. Okay, we're going to have a order tile. So what we need to take note of is the food tile, because this item is going to be similar to to our food tile. So let's go to to lib common. Let's see whether we do have a food tile or not probably we do have it somewhere okay we do have a foot tile over here right uh, let's go ahead clear things up a little bit so this tile takes in feed okay so it's going to be the same somehow but what we can do if we need to make some changes later on then we can just copy this go back to our order folder it's supposed to be here create a new folder and we're going to call it widget right after creating the folder, then we are going to just go ahead and not paste per se, but create a new file and we're going to call it order tile and it has to be a dot file. Let's paste the code. After pasting the code here, we need to change the name, okay, from tile to, from food tile to order tile. First, we take a look at how it looks and then if there are any changes that we need to make, then we can go ahead and 
just make some adjustments okay so here we do require food and we have our food item so that would work as well but we need to remove the gesture detector because we don't want it to redirect anyway okay so after clearing that what we are going to do over here we're going to close the tile close the food tile as well close the cut tile and we need our order page in our order page we're going to call for our, our order tile it's supposed to be tile over here so our order tile takes in food so we're going to have widget dot food okay so that's for starters okay so we already have our food item so this item will be appearing here so this is the item that we are trying to order okay so before we continue we need to add a little bit of of padding let's add a little bit of padding over here to this column okay padding and we're going to have padding horizontal it's supposed to be horizontal over here or oh, not horizontal it's supposed to be symmetric and we are going to take horizontal we're going to manipulate the horizontal side like that okay and that will do so after we have this the next thing that we're going to do right below we're going to go ahead and just create a container mm, a container okay so in our container we're going to require width and our width is going to take up the whole width so it's supposed to be width over here and as for our height we need to give it a height of height divided by let's give it the 2.2.5 after that we are going to have a box decoration it's not box decoration but decoration so decoration text box decoration and in here we need to do a little bit more so first the color the color has to be for this one now it has to be k off white okay so that's going to be our our container so right after this container we're going to deal with whatever we're going to put inside of our container a little bit later so after this we're going to require a custom button right a custom button so a custom button takes in text and here we need on tap so we, this is the function that we are going to use to to process the order so we have a bt and height if i'm not mistaken and bt and color so for the height we're going to go with 45 for starters after that let's just go ahead and try to play around with the with the colors but for color we need to save the file first to see how it looks so that's how it looks so so far so good over here we need to just add a size box right after adding a size box now we have a little bit of space over here so this can be a little bit higher than 10 let's give it a 20 so for the text we don't have anything as yet but we can say proceed to to payment or like that okay so that's it for not proceed to payment but the first thing that we can do we can create the order right create create order and then we proceed to payment or we can just say proceed to payment either way it will work out just fine okay so we need to design our page over here so we need to take care of this text it's a little bit dull we need it to be a little bit vibrant okay so we can go with k secondary over here and see how it looks nah that won't do light white light white is way better okay so that's good so right now let's go ahead and work on our inside of our container so inside of our container we're just going to have we do have a bottle radius of 10 
let's make it 12 dot r after that we need a child right we need a child over here so our child is going to be a column so our column it takes in children so let's leave it like that for now so in our column what we need we need a size box first we need to create a little bit of space right at the top so we're going to use a size box to create this space and our size box is going to to have a height of now let's give it a height of five over here okay let's just save it like that nothing will show since we don't have anything to anything visible okay so down at the bottom we're going to have a row widget so our row widget is going to have mm, main axis alignment and then we're going to have children as well so we need to close this not like that but we need to close it like that after closing our first our first is going to be a reusable text that's going to be the restaurant title we need to display the restaurant title so we need to have a reusable text widget so here we're going to access widget dot restaurant and here we're getting the the title of the restaurant let's add and now check over here okay so we need to handle our style let's bring our style down below we're going to have f style we need to give this a little bit of size so we're going to give it a size of 20 over here in the color it has to be a gray and for the font weight we're going to go with with bold like that okay but we need to adjust everything that we have we need to have a little bit of that's supposed to be padding if i'm not mistaken so our padding we're going to put it right at the top padding so let's see yeah okay so that's good if we have a vertical padding of 10 over here we can get rid of this size box okay so in inside of the row since it's a row we need another widget right so this widget we need to display the uh, the logo the logo of the of the restaurant that we're ordering from so here we're going to have a circular avatar okay our circular avatar takes in radius so we need to give it a radius that makes it circular so we're going to go not circular but it's circular already a radius determines the size like how big it is going to be let's give it a background color go with k primary and let's go with the background image so for image we're going to render a network image so the image is going to come from widget dot restaurant dot supposed to be a logo over here okay that will do so that's our logo i know it's a little bit bogus but that's what we have for now if you have a better image you can go ahead and replace it okay so after this row we're going to just go ahead add a little bit of of space okay so we need a size box and we're going to give it a height of five over here let's change this to five so let's format the code a little and let's go ahead and close the row okay our main focus is outside of the size box now so down at the bottom we're going to have a row text i guess we worked on a row text before so here we're going to have business hours okay this is supposed to be a string business hours so here we're going to get business hours from widget dot restaurant dots so we need to get the time okay make it nullable over here okay so we have our hours let's see down below that we can have distance to restaurant so here uh then we are forced to go ahead and do something with the distance because we didn't take care of that but that's something that we'll do uh we need distance so this distance now if a person is ordering they do use a default address so it should be the distance between the default address and the restaurant okay let's just say from from restaurant and whenever we we are dealing with distance we have to set some kind of restrictions as well because let's take for example a person is trying to order something but the distance is like what 20 kilometers 30 kilometers right so those kind of orders can be restricted somehow because 
let's say the distance is just too much even for for a courier to take care of the the order then we do have to restrict them to from from making the payment and down at the bottom we're going to just go ahead and have this is delivery price from a restaurant let's put anything fixed that's going to be a lot like 12 maybe four bucks would do like that so that will do and we're going to have order total so we need to put a little bit of space between in between these rows we need to put a little bit of space because without this space our design might look a little bit bogus so let's just go ahead and take care of the the spacing a little bit okay now it's way more appealing than it was before okay so here we're going to have the same so we can copy this part and we can paste it over here and we're going to have order total order total right so our order total it should include this delivery price as well as the as the the price of of the item okay so we're going to take the item for starters widget dot item dot price new to string okay Ooh. we do have a constant yes okay so that's going to be our total for now so let's go ahead and try to add a dollar sign ahead and display our additives over here okay we need to display the additives that are related to to this particular order because the user should be able to see them so let's go to our our tile in this tile we do have additives like that that's the list view builder we're going to just copy this code okay with times okay so this size box okay let's just copy editive editive dot title so it's going to be a little bit different since our list is a list string okay so inside it here after after this size box let's paste the size box that we copy from the other page the width it can be width over here and that's okay the height can remain the same scroll horizontal that's correct but for our count is going to be a little bit different so it's supposed to be widget dot it's supposed to be item here dot and from the item we are going to get the Is it even appropriate? Item, okay. Item dot additives. So here's supposed to be a string. It should be a list string, okay. So here we're just getting a string. That string is the additive that we want to display over here so to access we're going to just access it from item dot additives index like that so that's okay we can add a little bit we can add a heading to it so that we won't have confusion right on top and we can just say additives here like that with a capital letter A this this column okay cross X alignment additive right in the beginning okay well, let's adjust this to a 10 and let's add a little bit of it's 
for my big code the same thing. so this one can be five no problem okay so that's it for this page we can decrease at the height of the con of the container to let's put it as 3.5 over here and see how it looks okay 3.5 would do a four would be way more better okay let's go with 3.9 just in case okay so that's going to be to so the next thing is to create an order create the controllers but first before we create the con items we're going to take care of the the distance first right because we need to get after we get the calculation then we can go ahead and have our our right prices let's go ahead and look at something that we need to do first so in our last section we said we want to calculate the the distance in it because like if you're to create an order over here let's say this is our item right we want to place an order so this is what we get right but at the moment this value is is not dynamic it's something that we just wrote on the ui so we need to get this value right the price from from the restaurant and distance from the restaurant so we are going to be using uh this formula it's called half and sign formula okay so i'm not going to to write anything related to this formula but i'm going to explain a little bit things that you might need to know okay so basically what we do have over here we do have this class inside of our services inside of our services folder we do have this file with the name distance if we open this file oh by the way the file is going to be provided to you beforehand to make things easier okay so if you open the file what you're going to have you're going to have a class inside of this class there's going to be a function and this function is going to return a, a distance time this is supposed to be a model but we don't have this model as yet so what we can do uh, we want to return some some values so let's just go ahead create the create the class first and then we can just go not the class we can create the model first and then we can just go ahead explain everything without in any error okay so we have distance time and it's going to be a dot file right so here we need to have our class and we give our class a name and we're going to call it distance time okay so right at the top we're going to have a few parameters and all of them they're all going to be double okay so first we're going to have uh let's go ahead and have the the price that's going to be the first next we're going to have a distance and our distance is going to be a double as well and right below that we're going to have time we need to calculate the time it takes to get from point a to point b but time in this instance it's not something that we are going to it's not something that we're going to like put more emphasis on okay so these are required parameters right Not like that okay so let's just save after saving we come here and we go ahead and import okay so we don't have the error so we get that out of the way so whenever we run this function we want to return the the three values that we have in this particular model okay so 
this distance time that's our return value so in order for us to have the return values we are going to require some certain parameters from wherever we are going to use this function from okay so let's take for example here if we take a look at our arguments we do have quite a few the first one we do have latitude that's latitude from latitude one that's latitude from the first point let's call it point a okay so we're going to take the latitude from that point and we need the longitude as well so we're going to have two coordinates that's from point a and we need to provide the ones for point b as well so thus we do have a latitude two and longitude two okay so these ones are the one that we're going to use to calculate the distance okay so this is where this formula comes into play we calculate the distance and over here that's where we are getting our our distance right but over here you need to just modify it a little bit according to according to like you can give it a margin of error because it's not going to be precise so you can calculate it somehow and try to modify it here giving it a little bit of margin of error because it depends because if we're using latitude and longitude now now it depends with the routes that are going to be used like distance depends on the routes so in that sense you just need to just accommodate a little bit of margin of error so that's it for our distance so once we do have our distance we need to calculate the time so our time is going to be the distance that we get over here and we divide it by the speed per kilometer so in our arguments we're going to provide speed per kilometer okay so not speed per kilometer but speed per hour okay so let's take for example uh our drivers are going to be using bikes so for bikes we do have an average speed okay we can say okay our delivery delivery guys our courier guys moves at a particular speed let's say uh, 10 kilometers an hour right so we have to divide the distance with the speed in kilometers per hour right that's how we're going to calculate our time over here so for our price we need to have we need to multiply our distance times price per kilometer okay so this is going to be maybe let's say it's something that we have to take into account like when we are designing or it's we can give this we cannot give it to to couriers to set the price we have to set a best price for our deliveries since couriers are going to be picking the orders after a person has ordered because like if we try to make couriers set the price it's going to be difficult in the sense that we have to assign a courier to a food item before that item is purchased okay so it gets a little bit difficult so we, we have to set a best price and we cal we calculate our, our price using that best price okay and after that we're going to just go ahead and return our our model so here our model is going to require distance time and price so these are the values that we have over here right so now we now that we're done with explaining a little bit about this particular function what we can do we can go ahead to our order page right in our order page right at the top let's come right after build context so right after build context 